round of Champions League group games out of the way, all eyes are on the Premier League this weekend as Man United and CR7 look to bounce back from an unexpected loss against Swiss champions Young Boys. New signing Jadon Sancho was an early substitute in Switzerland after Juan Bissaka's red card forced a tactical reshuffle. But the young England striker has made little impact for the Reds so far after arriving with much fanfare earlier in the summer. In this week's Five Aside, we asked why Sancho has struggled to hit the ground running at Old Trafford. Even though the fee for Sancho was more expensive than Ronaldo or Varane, I think that Man United fans need to be patient with him because he's a 21 year old who's never played in the Premier League before and he's only started twice so it will definitely take time for him to get into you know, his rhythm but I expect a peak down the line for Sancho. He's just too good of a player um, to have you know, slow performances or poor performances moving forward. A proper Englishman and a proper footy fan, James Sharman's new weekly series previews an under the radar EPL clash that you need to know about. This week, mid-table strugglers Aston Villa against underachieving Everton side with lofty ambitions. It's not as if these two are unfamiliar with each other. Aston Villa and Everton are founding members of the Football League. They first met in 1888. Villa won that one 2-1, by the way. What a match it was, if memory serves me right. The thing is, they're just so similar. Really old, really beloved, proper football clubs. Their stadiums are roughly the same size and don't have corporate names. At least just not yet. And overall, after all these years, have both beaten each other 82 times with 60 draws thrown in. Now this season, Everton have started really well sitting in a Champions League spot and yeah I know it's early but still that is really impressive for Rafa Benitez and company. While Villa have actually played better than their top place standing, still this just feels like a draw to me. After all, last season's fixture was nil-nil but I like goals in this one with Aston Villa's Danny Ings looking really solid with two and three so far and Everton's Andros Townsend looking back to his vintage best. What a goal that was against Burnley on Monday. Now, it should be mentioned that Villa's goalkeeper Emi Martinez and record signing Emiliano Buendia were missing in the loss to Chelsea last weekend as they went against the Premier League's wishes and travelled to Argentina for World Cup qualifying. And you know how that turned out, right? Which means quarantine. Now, they are available for this one, but will they have their wrists slapped? Sorry, there are no odds for wrist slapping as far as I can tell at the moment. Still, Villa Everton just sounds like a football match, doesn't it? Like a nice, comfy pair of slippers. Search Twitter for footballing shithousery and prepare yourself for hours of fun as the fans around the world delight in the dark arts of the beautiful game. In this week's Seriously Football, Jackie Pirico provided an unofficial history for footies best of the worst. Football shithousery. What is it? And how did we get here? Here's a two minute history explaining everything you need to know about the dark arts of the beautiful game. First, the language. Shithouse, vernacular noun meaning extremely unpleasant place. Here in 2021, the bathroom is an idyllic place of refuge. Browse Instagram, reply to emails, kick back and have some you time. But in 1821, the shithouse was an unlit, uninsulated outbuilding filled with bugs and vermin and the stench of many previous occupants. Shithousery, therefore, is the act of being extremely unpleasant. And in football, there's two main variants. One, create an extremely inhospitable environment. Two, achieve an unfair advantage through extremely unpleasant behavior. Diego Maradona's hand of God took shithousery out of the shadows in the 1986 World Cup. A clear handball, a total disdain for the rules, an utter contempt for the spirit of fair play, and a gleeful rejoicing in sporting deviance. Whew, Maradona was an elite dark arts practitioner on every level. At the other end of the pitch, football hardman Vinnie Jones set the bar for defensive shithousery. The gentleman's handshake he offered Paul Gascoigne in 1988 clearly inspired a whole generation of modern shithouse specialists like Pepe, Busquets, and Sergio Ramos. In the early 90s, German striker Jurgen Klinsmann perfected the dive, faking serious injury with twists, rolls, and groans. Didier Drogba innovated with a neck hold and handshake that suggested the imminent loss of consciousness. And in recent years, Neymar elevated it to a whole new art form with one of the longest sustained dives in history. An eight meter surging volume 
vault that comprised 10 whole body twists and enough pathos to shame Michelangelo himself. Environmental shithousery includes time wasting by players, officials, and ball boys, as well as flares, projectiles, and decapitated animal carcasses hurled onto the pitch by fans. Yes, that actually happened. So in essence then, the dark arts of football either banish you to the shithouse or shit from a great height upon your most cherished hopes and dreams. If you're looking to spice up your sports with a wager this weekend, check our latest EPL parlay on TikTok now. This weekend, we're picking away wins, Man United, Chelsea, and Everton. Take Everton to continue their great start to the season with an away win at Villa at plus 190. Take Man United to make light work of West Ham at minus 138. And take Chelsea to beat Tottenham in the North London Derby at minus 125 for a combined parlay of plus 801. Thanks for watching and don't forget to follow at The Parlay on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram or come see us at theparlay.com.